This is about the system life cycle, a theoretical approach to looking at the way that we develop new systems. Every time we develop a new system in IT or in most practices, we go through a series of steps. The system life cycle is a way of trying to diagrammatically present that information in a way that we can all understand the stages that are involved, uh, breaking them down and allowing us then to start to st understand what we're actually doing at each stage. So let us start by first of all un understanding the first part of the system life cycle. This is the analysis stage. The analysis is about looking at the system that currently exists. Not the one you're going to build, but the current situation or problem or whatever else. If you're presented with a problem to solve, it is at the analysis stage that you look at that problem itself. It involves a multitude of activities and events um, and can be undertaken by someone who is called an analyst. Their job is to undertake the analysis itself and from that analysis the development of a solution can then be implemented. After the analysis comes the design stage. Design is about planning what you're going to do. It is not about doing. You shouldn't actually be building anything here. An analogy would be that you draw your design for a car. You don't sit down with the metal and start bashing the metal to create yourself a car. You'd sit down with a pen and, pa uh, pen, pen and pencil and piece of paper and draw out your design. The design is about planning your solution to the problem. Once you've undertaken the design, you go into implementation. And implementation simply means to build, to create, to finish off, to construct what you want to do, your solution to a problem or situation. So the, at this point you are actually dealing in software terms with programming or construction of a database or a spreadsheet solution or whatever else. In car manufacturing you will be manufacturing the car at this stage. The system life cycle then kind of takes us around to the next stage which is testing. Once you've designed and constructed a vehicle, you want to make sure that it actually works before you give it out to the public. You actually want to know that the wheels go around, the brakes work, or in the case of the database, data, data is stored where it should be, in the manner it should be, and everything else. So you undertake that here at the testing stage of the life cycle. The final stage of the life cycle is the evaluation. Now, evaluation means to re look at everything you've done, look at your solution, look at the problem that you were originally given. Have you resolved that? Have you met all the requirements? Have you solved all the problems? Invariably, we generally haven't solved all the problems. We can identify new ones that have arisen, ones that could not be solved because technology was not available, or other restrictions. So it never should be a situation of saying, haven't we done really well, look at what we've done. It should be an open document that actually identifies the strengths of the solution implemented and its own weaknesses that need to be resolved with any future developments. And that's why this is called the system life cycle because it cycles round. It rotates back to an analysis. Once you've evaluated and identified weaknesses within the current system, it returns back to the analysis. But as you can see from the message at the bottom, there is an issue with the system life cycle. First of all, it implies that the testing side can only result immediately in an evaluation. That if something is wrong with the system, you simply go on and evaluate it. It also implies other problems with testing, but we'll have a look at those in a second. It also gives an implication that the analysis is the first stage where we go with, but then that. Uh, an, analysis takes a lot of time and energy and cost. It costs a business a lot of money to analyze something. Therefore there should be a step before that to make sure that what you're going to do is actually worthwhile doing, committing these resources to it. So let's look at an alternative to this entire system. If we don't have the system life cycle then what could we have? Well. Let's take this type of diagram. We start at the top again, but this time we have something called a feasibility study. Now the feasibility study is nothing more than actually a brief analysis. It's looking at the 
cost of implementing uh, implementing a solution it looks at the value of it if I'm, it's going to cost me a lot of money, is the return on that going to be worthwhile? What are the benefits and do they outweigh the negatives of what we're going to do? And when we look at technology, is there technology that actually exists that can do our solution? Are we trying to do something that's not possible? We may look at the employee, the impact upon the employee, or the structure of the organization, or employee morale, or a whole host of their situations. So the feasibility is a short term, very short impact, much cheaper than doing an analysis. If the feasibility comes out successfully, then you move on to the analysis stage. From the analysis stage, you would then go and do some testing. Well, what are you actually testing? Well, you're not actually testing anything. You're planning your testing stage, and this is where this diagram comes into its own. You should be testing, you should be planning your tests based upon the analysis of the existing system. Does the test you're going to carry out test your potential solution against what was the identified problem? When we come to look at testing later on, this will become clearer. But quite simply, I want to make sure that what I build solves the problem that I have identified in the analysis and does not simply confirm that what I have built works. There is no point in me confirming that my motor car that I have designed and built works beautifully when actually what I wanted was a motorboat. From the testing, I can then go to the design stage. Now. I go from design, but if there's a flaw in my design and therefore I test my design as I'm going through, then I might identify a weakness that requires more analysis by the analyst. So the analyst may need to undertake some more analysis work because I don't have enough information at the design stage, so I should be able to go back to testing. But once I've finished the design and I'm happy with that, I should then move on to implementation. As I'm building, I should be testing. I shouldn't wait till I finish building the car to take it out onto the road. Surely the best thing to do is check each component I'm putting there. So before I even bolt the engine in, check that the engine works. Before I move away from one wheel, make sure it spins round. All kind of small tests can be undertaken. So that when we come to do the final testing, and we're testing the whole apparatus, we're testing that the whole apparatus works as a whole, and not, whoops, the wheels don't go around, whoops, the brakes don't stop the vehicle. We should have seen that first of all coming. Once we've implemented it, and again, we should be able to go back to the design if the implementation is found to be flawed, or even all the way back to the analysis if the implementation seems to be flawed. So we should be able to go backwards and forwards throughout the system. Once the testing is implemented, and once we've confirmed testing, we should then be able to go on to evaluation. Do the same thing, confirm that the system works, and if needs be, if there are further improvements, we study, we go on to a feasibility to see if it's feasible to solve those problems at this stage or if it requires to stop there. That is basically what the system life cycle is about. You have two potential diagrams there to work with. The one, the first one is the official diagram. The second one is another approach of trying to show that actually this is never as simple as it seems and that we do want to convey more information in these diagrams. I hope that's been useful. Hopefully, see you in the analysis stage.